Hello everybody, myself, Vanita, Selection Grade Lecturer and in charge of children of ENC Department, Common Women's Polytechnic Calvary. So today we are discussing about the session 4 of Course Outcome 2, which is Group Lecture and Modulation of Unit 2. So in the earlier class, we came to know so what is meant by radar. So radar is nothing but the electromagnetic waves used to detect the target. And also we came to know what is meant by radar range. So the radar range is nothing but the distance between the radar and target. So radar is nothing but gathering of information about distant object or target by sending electromagnetic waves at them and analyzing the echo. The radar consists of transmitter and receiver, each connected to the directional antenna. So here you can see the transmitter and the receiver. So it is connected to the antenna through the duplex. The radar consists of the transmitter and receiver each connected to the directional antenna. The transmitter is capable of sending out a large UHF or microwave power through the antenna. The receiver collects as much energy as possible from the echoes reflected in its direction by the target and then processes and displays the information. So here you can see the uh, so duplexer in the figure, you can see the duplexer. So here, most radio receiver systems include the duplexer. So in two-way communication, if we are supposed to use the same antenna for both transmission of the signal and reception of the signal, then we have to use the duplexer. So duplexer is a microwave switch which connects the antenna to the transmitter. So therefore, the radar cannot receive the signal during the transmission time. Similarly, it connects the antenna to the receiver. So here you can use the duplexer here. So here the radar signals are transmitted through the duplexer to the antenna. So at the same time, the receiver is not connected. So again, the Radar waves from the antenna are received and they are sent to the receiver to the duplex. So here we have types of duplexes. So we can classify the duplexes as the following three types. That is the branch type duplexer, balanced duplexer and circulator as duplexer. So here you can see the block diagram of the branch type reflector. So whenever a single antenna is used for both transmitting and receiving, as in a radar system, problems arise. Switching the antenna between the transmit and receive modes presents one problem, ensuring that maximum use is made of the available energy. The simplest solution is to use a switch to transfer the antenna connection from the receiver to the transmitter during the transmitted pulse and back to the receiver during the return of the echo pulse. So no practical mechanical switches are available that can open and close in a few microseconds. Therefore, the electronic switches must be used. Switching systems of this type are called as the duplex. So an effective radar deflecting system must meet the following four requirements. The first one, during the period of transmission, the switch must connect the antenna to the transmitter and disconnect it from the receiver. Second point, the receiver must be Slowly isolated from the transmitter during the transmission of the high power pulse to avoid 
damage to sensitive receiver components. After transmission, the switch must rapidly disconnect the transmitter and connect the receiver to the antenna. For targets close to the radar to be seen, the action of the switch must be extremely rapid. So the switch should absorb an absolute minimum of power both during transmission and reception. Therefore, a radar deflector with a microwave equivalent of a fast, low loss, single pole, double throw switch. The devices developed for this purpose are similar to spark gaps on which high current microwave discharges furnish low impedance path. So here in the figure you can see the transmitter and two switches are there that is the ATR switch and PR switch and this is the receiver which is connected to the transmission line. So now we will go to the uh, branch type deflector. So already as I said, it consists of two switches. It is a transmit receive switch, that is a PR switch, and anti transmit receive switch or the ATR switch. So these two PR and ATR switch are placed at the distance of lambda by 4 from the transmission line, and both the switches are separated by a distance of lambda by 4. So a deflector usually contains two switches, or we can say uh, call it as a spark gaps that are connected in a microwave circuit with three terminal transmission lines, one each for the transmitter, receiver, and antenna. These circuits may be connected in parallel or in series. One tube is connected for the PR tube, and the other is connected for the ATR. So here, already you know what is meant with PR tube, it is nothing but the transmit receive tube and the other ATR tube means transmit receive or anti-transmit receive switch. So here two switches are there, PR switch which is a transmit receive switch and other, another one is anti-transmit receive switch. So here, the overall action of the PR and ATR circuits depends on the impedance characteristics of the quarter wave length section of the transmission line. TR and ATR tubes may contain radioactive material. TR tubes are usually conventional spark gaps enclosed in partially evacuated steel, glass, and glass. The arc is formed as electrons are conducted through the ionized gas or vapor. So here, during the transmission, both PR and ATR will look like an open circuit from the transmission line. Therefore, the antenna will be connected to the transmitter through the transmission line. So here you can see in the figure, during the transmission of the pulse, an arc appears across both spark plugs and causes the TR and ATR circuits to act as quarter wave stops. So here you can see in the figure, the circuits then reflected open circuits to the TR and ATR circuit connection to the main transmission line. So they look like an open circuit. So the DR and ATR uh, switches, they look like an open circuit so that the uh, radio, sorry, radar waves are transmitted to the transmission line. So here, none of the transmitted energy can pass through these reflected open into the ATR stub or into the receiver. Therefore, all of the transmitted energy is divided to the antenna. So you can see that all the waves are travel through the antenna.
next so here you can see the same thing is repeated again during the transmission pulse and after appears the drop both spark gaps and causes the PR and PCR circuits to act as closed and the circuits then the circuit open circuits to the PR and PCR circuit connection to the main transmission line. So none of the transmitted energy can pass through these reflected tokens into the APR term or into the receiver. Therefore, all of the transmitted energy is divided into the antenna. So this is about the again uh, branch type two structure. Here you can see that this is uh, during the reception. So during reception, the amplitude of the received echo is not sufficient to cause an arc across either spark structure. So under this condition, the ATR circuit now has as a half-wave transmission line terminated in a short wave. So this is reflected as an open circuit at the receiver T junction three quarter wavelength away. The received echoes an open circuit in the direction of the transmitter. However, the receiver input impedance is matched to the transmission line impedance so that the entire received signal will go to the receiver with the minimum amount of loss. So here you can see this is a branch that we have looked like this. Uh, during the reception, here you can see. So during reception, the amplitude of the received echo is not sufficient to cause the arc across either spark gap. Under this condition, the APR circuit acts as a half wave transmission line terminated in a short circuit. This is reflected as an open circuit at the receiver C junction. Three quarter wavelengths away, the received echo goes an open circuit in the direction of the transmitter. The entire received signal will go to the receiver with the minimum amount of flux. So here, the entire received waves are directed towards the receiver. So this was about the two-plexer branch type two structure. So in this two-plexer, we have studied about the PR switch and the ATR switch and how the radar signals are transmitted to the transmission line to the antenna and again how the signals are received from the antenna to the receiver. So using this APR and PR switches. So now let us go to the modulator. So here you can see the modulator. So here the modulator controls the radar pulse width by means of a rectangular DC pulse of the required duration and amplitude. The peak power of the transmitted RS pulse depends on the amplitude of the modulator pulse. Here in the figure, you can see the modulator. So, what is the function of the modulator? The modulator controls the radar pulse width. So, it controls the modulator radar pulse width by means of a rectangular DC pulse of the required duration and amplitude. So, here it controls the radar pulse width by means of a rectangular DC pulse of the required duration and amplitude. So here the peak power of the transmitted RF pulse depends on the amplitude of the radar pulse. So here already you have you know what is meant by uh, peak pulse. So here the power of the transmitted peak pulse depends upon the width of the rectangular DC pulse which is controlled by the modulator. So the modulator controls the radar pulse width 
by means of the rectangular DC pipe of the required duration and quantity. The peak power of the transmitted pulse depends on the amplitude of the modulator pulse. Pulse depends on the amplitude of the modulator pulse and an effective modulator pulse must perform the following manner. That is, it should rise from zero to its maximum value almost instantaneously. It should remain at its maximum value for the duration of the transmitter pulse. Then it should fall from the maximum value to zero almost instantaneously. So here in the figure you can see the diagram block diagram of the modulator. So here it consists of the power supply. Secondly, the storage element. It consists of the storage element. So here you can see the storage element. So here a circuit element or the network used to store the energy. So here it is used to store the energy. Then we have the charging impedance. So this is called the charging impedance. So the charging impedance is used to control the charge time of the storage element and to prevent short circuiting of the power supply during the modulator pulse. So here we have the charging impedance. What it does? It is used to control the charge time of the storage element. And secondly, to prevent short circuiting of the power supply during the modulator pulse. So first we have to what we have, we have the uh, NV storage element. So it is used to store the energy. Energy storage element is used to store the energy. Then we have the charging impedance. So charging impedance is used to control the charge time of the storage element. And also it is used to prevent short circuiting of the power supply during the modulator pulse. Then we have the energy source and we have the load. So here we have the modulator switch. So the modulator switch is used to discharge the energy stored by the storage element through the transmitter oscillator during the modulator so here, using the switch, what we can do? We can discharge the energy stored in the storage element. So this is the storage element. So energy stored in the storage element. So using the switch, we can discharge the energy stored in the storage element through the transmitter oscillator. Many different kinds of components are used in a radar modulator. The power supply generally produces a high voltage output, either alternating or direct current. The charging impedance may be a resistor or an storage element, is generally a capacitor and artificial. <coughs> Transmission time or a pulse forming method. The modulator switch is usually a direct. The figure shows the modulator. So, here when the switch is closed, so what happens when the switch is closed? The storage element discharging through the transmitter, the energy storage by the storage element is released in the form of high power DC modulator pulse. The transmitter converts the DC modulator pulse to an RF pulse which is radiated into space by the radar antenna. Thus, the modulator switch is closed for the duration of a transmitted RF pulse, but open between pulses. So 
So in the same manner, when the switch is open, so what happens when the switch is open? When the modulator switch is open, and the storage element charging with the modulator switch open, the transistor produces no power output, but the storage element stores a large amount of energy. So here, in the figure you can see, if the modulator switch is closed, then the storage element is charging through the transmitter. The energy stored by the storage element is released in the form of high power DC modulator pulse. The transmitter converts the DC modulated pulse to an RF pulse, which is radiated into space by the radar antenna. So here, again we have the types of modulators. There are two types of modulators used, that is the line pulsing modulator and hard to modulator. The line pulsing modulator stores energy and forms pulses in the same circuit element. This element is usually a pulse forming network. A hard tube is a high vacuum electron field. The hard tube modulator forms the pulse in the device. The pulse is then amplified and applied to the modulator. This is because the hard tube modulator has lower efficiency. Its circuits are more complex. A higher power supply voltage is required and is more sensitive to voltage changes. The line type pulsing modulator is easier to maintain because of its less complex than circuitry. Also, for a given amount of power output, it is lighter and more complex because it is the principally used modulator in modern data. So, yes, up to now we have discussed about the modulator. Next, let us go to the MCQ question here. So, here, question number one. A duplexer is an electronic device that allows a. Bidirectional communication, B. Unidirectional communication, C. Modulation of a signal. So the right answer is A. Okay. The right answer is A. Next we have question number 2. The CR tube has the primary function of a. Disconnecting the receiver. B. Disconnecting the transmitter. C. All the above. So the answer is, what is the answer? Disconnecting the receiver. Isn't it? So yes, we have two tubes, isn't it? CR tube and ADR tube. Isn't it? So, here, in order to disconnect the receiver, we are using the CR tube and in order to disconnect the transmitter, we are using the ATR tube. This is the answer for this. Next question number three. The modulator controls A, the radar pulse width, B, the received echoes, C, direction of the transmitter. So the right answer is A. Isn't it? So the modulator controls what it controls? It controls the radar pulse width. It? it controls the radar pulse width. It is the amplitude and width. It's controlled by the modulator. So the right answer is the radar pulse width. Next, you have question number four. The modulator switch use. So, it is used for what? A. To discharge the energy stored by the 
storage element, B to match to the transmission line, C as the receiver with the minimum amount of slots. So here what is the answer? The modulator switch is used to discharge the energy stored by the storage element to match to the transmission line. Then as a receiver with a minimum amount of loss. So remember whether it is to more what is the function of the modulator switch. So remember the diagram of the modulator and the switch. So here whether it is used to discharge the energy stored by the storage element or to match to the transmission line or as the receiver with the minimum amount of loss. So what is the answer? So the answer is the modulator switch is used to discharge the energy stored by the storage element. That is A is the answer. Next question number five. The peak power. The peak power of the transmitted RF pulse depends on A. Amplitude of the modulator pulse. C. Energy stored by the storage element. C. Modulation of signal. So what is the right answer? The peak power of the transmitted RF pulse depends on the A amplitude of the modulator pulse, B energy stored by the storage element, C modulation of the signal. So what is the right answer here? Hmm? The right answer is A, the amplitude of the modulator pulse. Okay. Next question number. A directional radio beam is A. Radiated equally in all directions. B. It is radiated in one direction. C. It contains no energy. D. Has circular radiation type. So here, directional radio beam means it has the direction, isn't it? So, it is the right answer. So here, a radiated equally in all directions. So all directions are radiated up by way. B, so it is radiated in one direction. So C contains no energy. D has circular radiation. So which will be the correct answer here? A or B or C or D. So here we have D is one direction because as the name itself indicates a directional radio beam is in. so here it radiates in one direction next one question number seven the radar cross section of a target so you have to indicate the false statement here a depends on the frequency used b may be reduced by special coating of the target. C. Depends on the aspect of a target. Is this non spherical D. Is equal to the actual cross-sectional area of a small target. So, the radar cross-section of a target. It depends whether it depends on frequency or it may be reduced by the special coating of the target or whether it depends on the aspect of the target or it is equal to the actual cross-sectional area of the target. It is the right answer. So here, the right answer is B. It depends upon the actual cross-section of the target. Question number 8. A high PRS width. So here, indicate the false statement A. Make the return support easier to distinguish from noise. B. Make target tracking easier with conical scanning. C. Increase the maximum range. D. Has no effect on the range resolution. So, what is the correct answer here? So high PRF state will 
में ए में इंटरेक्ट ऑन नेटवर्क इंडिया से डिस्टिंग कम नो बी में टारगेट ट्रैकिंग यूजर विद कॉनिकल स्कैनिंग सी इंक्रीज द मैक्सिमम रेंज डी हैज नो इफेक्ट ऑन द रेंज रेजोल्यूशन सो व्हिच इज द राइट आंसर द राइट आंसर इज इंक्रीज द मैक्सिमम रेंज सो हाउ वी आर एफ विल इंक्रीज द मैक्सिमम रेंज सो नेक्स्ट वी विल गो फॉर द क्वेश्चन नंबर 9 In military application, the radar cross section of vehicles is minimized. A. True. B. False. So it's a difficult whether it is true or false because in the military application, the radar cross section of vehicles is minimized. So cross section of the radar is minimum there. So what is the answer? So it's true. So with this, I complete my lecture. So thank you, thank you from my whole team.